Uh, good morning, everyone. It's 8.30 and I guess we can get started. Uh, let me welcome you on uh, IT Anno or IT Morning because this presentation is going to be in English. Uh, my name is Jiří Neoral and uh, this session is going to be about building dynamic reports in Power BI. Uh, maybe some of you already uh, saw similar presentation in Czech, but uh, this is focused on uh, everyone, including uh, non Czech speaking audience. So uh, let me uh, tell you the outline. First, I will briefly introduce myself. Uh, then we'll uh, continue with switching uh, uh, measures using outbound dimension. Uh, then we'll uh, go ahead uh, and simplify the code using variables. I'll show you uh, functionality of calculation groups, field parameters, and there will, there will be also space for your questions that I will try to answer. Uh, you can paste your questions in the chat because uh, you are uh, by default on mute. Uh, I will use this PowerPoint presentation only as a, a logical uh, outline and uh, this session is recorded and you will be able to uh, uh, access the recording in approximately seven uh, working days uh, from now. It will be uh, shared with you. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself. I work as uh, a business intelligence architect and developer at a company called Gesteam. Uh, I work in uh, business intelligence business uh, from late 2008, uh, beginning of 2009, and with Power BI specifically from the very beginning when it started as an Excel add-in into uh, as an Excel add-in called Power Pivot uh, around 2011, so for quite some time already. And uh, I was awarded by Microsoft for my community contributions as Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. Uh, in 2017 and uh, get rewarded uh, since since this year. So uh, let's have a look on uh, the dynamic reports. Uh, what am I going to talk about? It's about switching measures in visuals. Uh, I in Power BI, I've got quite a common request that users want to see the same layout, uh, but with different different measures. Uh, like um, being able to uh, select uh, if they want to see a sales amount or quantity or or just to switch variances uh, if I rather to compare uh, the actuals against uh, target or against previous year, having an ability to uh, switch between these. Uh, let me show you uh, the uh, data model. I'm using um, uh, the demo uh, database, uh, uh, demo data model built on top of uh, AdventureWorks uh, sample, uh, which is quite uh, often used for for trainings. It contains uh, two fact tables, or more fact tables, but I'm going to use in this presentation uh, internet sales and reseller sales because this company uh, sales uh, bicycles and accessories uh, through these two channels. Uh, and there is a product dimension uh, that's related to this uh, built from free tables. And I'm going to use mainly uh, calendar dimension. And also I've got some short demo uh, that uh, we'll use uh, calculation groups with currency. So uh, the basic idea for this dynamic report is that I've got here uh, some base measures uh, that I I'm going to slice by uh, date hierarchy. So I will build a visual using date hierarchy. It's going to be metrics visual. And I'm going to use uh, internet sales. 
uh, measure to display and I'm going to use a reseller sales measure. And then uh, what I'm going to need as well is uh, uh, I've got here some other uh, calculations like uh, last year, variance to last year, variance to last year percentage, cumulative year to date uh, sales and so on. So the basic idea for this dynamic report is going to be uh, ability to switch if I want to see actual uh, for internet, reseller, or last year, and some of the percentage measures. So first thing I'm going to need is uh, unbound dimension uh, that can be built uh, the easiest way if you are in Power BI desktop uh, with data import by entering the data manually. So I'm going to use this option, enter data. Uh, it's going to be, uh, the table is going to be named uh, dynamic measure. And I'm going to need uh, ID column uh, for the dynamic measure and label. Uh, ID one will be internet sales. Two uh, will be internet last year. Internet variance to last year. Uh, and variance to last year percentage. And then I'm going to add a reseller. Uh, I'm going to use a reseller last year. Also the absolute variance. And percentage variance. I'm going to uh, create this uh, unbound dimension by by load button. And first thing uh, I would like to resolve is uh, being able to see which measure is going to be selected. I'm going to use this unbound dimension as a slicer for starters. Dynamic measure and I'm going to create there new measure that I'm going to call dynamic version one. And what we could use uh, is uh, um, minimum function from the ID column for dynamic measure. Why minimum? Because if I don't select anything, it should return ID one. And I can use this label as a slicer. And display this dynamic measure in a card. So right now, if I don't select anything, it's it returns one. Uh, if I pick variance to last year, it uh, gets always the correct ID. And I can add the dynamic measure uh, as a column into that matrix matrix visual. Uh, I can get back into this dynamic measure and what I'm going to use is function switch. Where uh, this is going to be expression on which I'm going to change uh, the output. So if uh, one is selected, uh, there was a measure of internet sales that I'm going to return uh, to number two was uh, the same measure, but last year. For number three, it was variance to last year, absolute value, 
Uh, number four was internet sales variance to last year percentage. And so on, I'm going to uh, paste all the combinations as I prepare them in the unbound dimension. I will hit enter and it should work already. So uh, right now, if I uh, don't select anything, you can see uh, internet sales because it's set up as a default. Uh, dynamic measure displays the same number. I can format the dynamic measure uh, with a separator or as a currency. And if I'll pick last year, variance to last year, it returns some values. Uh, the problem is with this uh, percentage measure. Uh, as you can see, because I set up the format uh, as a whole number, it works correctly for the uh, currency values, uh, but not for not for the percentages, uh, because uh, as a whole number, if it's increase of 80% it would be displaced, uh, displayed as number one. Uh, but for the dynamic measure, I cannot set, cannot set up any uh, dynamic format for the measure. Uh, so if I'm mixing, uh, which I uh, honestly do not much recommend uh, mixing this uh, switch between regular numbers and percentages, but it could be potentially fixed by a function format. I can check with if function uh, the if the minimum is in uh, number four or number eight, uh, then I would like to apply function format. and format it as a percentage with one decimal place uh, with uh, negative numbers in uh, brackets. Otherwise, I will format it uh, as absolute values in dollars in this case. Yeah, so now uh, it uh, works correctly with formatting, also for percentage values where uh, there are some crazy increases, uh, but it doesn't matter. I want to show it to you as a principle only. As you could mention, uh, some of these lines appeared and that's because if there is no number and it's formatted as text, uh, it's empty string and for empty strings, uh, empty strings aren't hidden in the visuals. On visual level, uh, you have option to show items that don't contain any data. Uh, but uh, empty string uh, isn't the same as blank value. So what can I do to fix this issue? Uh, I can check uh, the length of the uh, formatted value I hope I didn't delete it
if the length of the formatted value is zero, I would like to return blank instead. Otherwise, I would like to return the, this formatted value. Uh, which will fix the problem with those uh, blank uh, empty empty rows. So as you can see uh, right now, it kind of works, uh, but uh, this is a long and crazy statement that could be simplified, of course, but I uh, wanted to show it in extreme situation. Uh, if I want to format it, uh, to have it more readable, I can use site DAX formatter. And uh, what we can find out, uh, there are several sections that are repeated throughout the statement. For example, this minimum statement, uh, that switch statement is repeated. And this is not an efficient way to write a code. Uh, we can simplify it uh, by using variables which could also improve performance because in this case uh, these repeated elements uh, would be evaluated multiple times and uh, that's unnecessary and could underperform in comparison if you just evaluate those statements just once if necessary. So I will copy uh, that statement and rewrite the measure using variables. Let me copy uh, this switch statement and I'm going to create a second measure called dynamic version 2. And variables are set up by a uh, keyword var as variable and uh, first thing that we checked was that minimum selected uh, from uh, dynamic measure table from ID column. Uh, a return of the variable uh, will, will be returning the value from variable uh, is written like this. Yeah, so it works as previously. And uh, then I, I can create a second variable with that switch statement, call it just once, and I refer here to the previous variable called m and return value from the variable s for switch. Yeah, so then if I add uh, this dynamic measure version 2 into that matrix visual, it works as in the previous iterations. So uh, then uh, to improve it, uh, I would also have to fix formatting. I can create another variable switch formatted. And I can check if a variable M is in 0 or 8. I would like to format uh, that switch statement uh, as percentage with one decimal place. Uh, otherwise, I will format it uh, using as, as dollars.
and then I can return uh, this formatted switch. I have there some typo, I guess. I can check also if uh, that variable m is four or m is eight. Ah, I, I can see what, what is the problem. <laughs> I used a wrong variable name uh, in the output. It's uh, switch formatted, not formatted switch. OK. This should work, uh, but again with the problem. Uh, with uh, blank strings. Empty strings, uh, so um, I can just use if statement, check the len of formatted switch if it's equal to zero. If so, I will return blank value. Otherwise, I will return the value from variable switch formatted. Uh, this approach uh, is going to perform much better and the code is much more readable than what I showed you as the variation of this measure uh, number one. And this can work uh, in different situations. So if I'm going to use a dynamic version two uh, across year, quarter, month, date in matrix visual, I can uh, use this in different con contexts. I can use that label on columns, for instance. And I can switch the measure. Uh, there is one significant problem with this approach, and I mentioned at the beginning that uh, I don't recommend mixing uh, these percentage measures with uh, other values, and that's because uh, format function causes uh, the value output to be a text value. Text value can be displayed in matrix and table visuals, but it wouldn't work in charts because chart expect a number. And what can I do to fix this? Uh, there's another topic and that's uh, using uh, calculation groups. Calculation groups are in Power BI desktop in, and in a, a SQL Server analysis services for quite some time already. But in Power BI desktop, uh, they are not yet available in user interface. Uh, calculation groups uh, can be uh, set up using external tool called tabular editor, but they will make it into uh, Power BI desktop uh, eventually. Uh, just don't know the timeline for this. Uh, calculation groups can uh, 
resolve different issues, have multiple use cases. I will show you two. Uh, one for using this uh, dynamic selection of measure. Uh, it can be useful if you need to, uh, also the same logic for like uh, variances against previous year for multiple measures, margin, uh, sales amount, quantity, and everything, and you don't want to rewrite uh, the same uh, logic that you would like to shift uh, 365 days back. So let me show you uh, uh, these calculation groups uh, in in a demo. I will get back here and uh, uh, tabular editor. Uh, I highly recommend uh, website cyclobi.com uh, by Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari to Italian uh, MVPs, uh, where uh, there is a link to tools and in uh, different scenarios. Uh, uh, it's not that they programmed everything, but uh, they've got it in one aggregated place. Uh, these external tools uh, I use quite often Duck Studio, Vertipack Analyzer and Tabular Editor. So Tabular Editor can be downloaded here for free. You don't have to even register it. If you want to check these uh, checkboxes, you can download it and uh, use it. Uh, tabular Editor 3 is a commercial version, but uh, the older version uh, 2.17 is available for free. I got it already downloaded, so I will open Tabular Editor. Uh, tabular editor can be uh, connected by uh, this icon uh, either to a local uh, instance of Power BI desktop or you can connect through it also to uh, tabular server. So I will connect to local uh, version dynamic reports. Uh, there are different things that you can do here, but uh, for calculation groups, I can right click on tables and create a new calculation group. I will call it time calculations. Uh, it will also contain uh, a single column. Right now it's called a name. I'm going to rewrite it uh, from name to time calculations as is the name of the table. And you can create there multiple uh, calculation items. First calculation item I'm going to call actual. And uh, uh, calculation groups uh, use uh, different DAX functions that you weren't maybe aware of. Uh, there, there is uh, a function selected measure, which will check if I'm using internet sales or reseller sales or what. If I want to check the syntax, if I got it right, I can format it as uh, with integrated DAX formatter and it will change the case and outline uh, of the formula. I can create then a second calculation groups, which is going to be last year. And I can call it uh, using the same way as you would write a regular cal calculation uh, to refer to previous year. Calculate. Uh, but you will refer not to a specific measure, but to selected measure. Selected measure. And for switching to previous year, I can use same period last year. Same period last year from dim date and date is there in column full date alternate key. I can check if I got the syntax right. I got and I can create yet another calculation item which is going to be variance to last year uh, you can also use in calculation groups variables 
this year is a selected measure. Last year uh, is selected measure, same period last year. And the result uh, is going to be and this year min minus last year. I can also check here uh, for some issues if I don't have current year or if I don't have last year, I don't want to compare it. So I can check if this year is blank. Or last year is blank. I would like to return blank value. Uh, otherwise, uh, I would perf uh, I would do that subtraction. I can format it, uh, copy it into clipboard, and create uh, variance to last year percentage. Uh, you can set up here format string for calculation items uh, that can be uh, different uh, for each calculation item uh, which will fix that issue that, that I'm not uh, uh, I won't need to use a format function and uh, the output won't be a string expression so percentage I can paste here this formula and create another variable variance to last year and return division using fu function divide variance to last year divide with last year. Copy into clipboard, format it. And uh, right now I would like to propagate uh, these changes, this new time calculations table with time calculations column and four calculation items into my report. So uh, that can be done by this small icon, save the changes into data model. And I can see that there is some problem with this calculation item. It says that I've got there some problem with uh, syntax problem with a uh, if statement, and I can see that I forgot here equal sign. So format it yet again, and now it should be able to save it. Uh, Power BI desktop will inform me that one or more calculation group uh, was added, and I need to manually refresh uh, metadata in the data model. And I can create a new page. Uh, use hierarchy year quarter month date in yet another matrix visual. I can add um, internet sales measure. I can add time calculations to columns. And you can see uh, that it works. Yeah, so last year is shifted. Uh, variance to last year is a subtraction. Variance to last uh, year percentage uh, is the division. And I can use this also as a slicer or anyhow. And the uh, uh, main advantage of this approach is that uh, I can mix uh, different uh, formats like 
percentages and, uh, and the report is dynamic uh, with this slicer that can display uh, what I'm uh, returning as a value. And if I'll remove internet sales and use instant reseller sales, uh, the logic works the same uh, for this measure. Uh, and I did set up uh, the variance, variances and uh, date shifts uh, just in one place, and it works for all the measures in my data model. Uh, that are the major uh, advantages of this approach using calculation groups. Uh, calculation groups can uh, fix not uh, just uh, uh, you, you don't have to use uh, calculation groups just for uh, these dynamics reports, but uh, also to fix some common modeling problems in your data models. Uh, I mentioned that I've got here dimension currency. And if I'll use measure internet sales in and reseller sales in metrics visual, It tells me 80 million and 29 million. What will happen if I'll uh, split it by currency alternate key? Uh, it will tell me uh, that 14 million US dollars plus 1.8 million Canadian dollars and the other currencies result into this 29 million or respectively 80 million. Uh, it is correct for this data model uh, that uh, all the measures, this is a source currency uh, code, but everything is already recalculated to dollars. But in some cases, you don't want to summarize uh, values uh, from a column. Uh, this could be, for example, if you got a version of a target you improve the target as the uh, year goes by. You've got multiple versions, version one for the whole year, version two for uh, second second half and version three for first quarter. If uh, you don't do any precautions, you will end up uh, summarizing three versions of target uh, and uh, then your actuals won't be comparable. Uh, because your target will be three times bigger than your actuals. So for such modeling purposes, you can also use calculation groups uh, to fix something shouldn't be calculated. Right now, I would like to display in the total line US dollars only. So if I'll jump uh, back to tabular editor, I can create yet another calculation group and it's going to be called default. Default uh, and uh, the column is going to be called default currency. It will have one calculation item called default currency. And I will check if if I got selected just a single uh, currency. Uh, you can use, for example, function has one value. Uh, then I would like to display selected measure. Otherwise, I would like to return selected measure. Uh, for currency alternate key. 
US Dean. I can check if I wrote the formula right. And I didn't. Otherwise, it would uh, be formatted by DAX formatter. Uh, regretfully, this external tool, uh, the IntelliSense uh, options aren't here as they could be. But uh, right now, I can see my formula is correct. And I can propagate this into uh, my data model. So I did hit the save button. Uh, I'm, I will jump back into Dynamics report and refresh. Uh, it didn't take any effect yet, uh, but it appeared as default dimension in my data model. Uh, what I could do, I could filter all the pages uh, by default currency. Uh, what happened? Uh, as you can see, if I have a split by currency, it uh, returns those original numbers. But in totals, I can see just values from US dollars. So uh, calculation groups have multiple purposes, uh, fixing these uh summarization across attribute that doesn't make sense to be summarized can be handled by calculation groups as well uh, this isn't about uh building a dynamic report but i wanted to mention it because it can be useful uh, for dynamic report you could use uh, the option as i showed you uh, with time calculations all right i've got here uh, yet another topic and uh, that's using field parameters for dynamic reports. I don't know if you are aware of this functionality. And uh, I will rather describe uh, field parameters directly on demo because one presentation can explain better than uh, long sentences. Uh, on modeling tab, uh, Was it modeling tab? Yeah, uh, modeling tab, uh, there is an option to create a new field parameter in your data model. And you can pick uh, a name for the parameter and you can pick multiple fields in specific order that you would like to mix in a slicer to change uh, how your data are uh, set up into a hierarchy in a visual. I can add here category, I can add here color, class, but also I can mix, uh, mix it with stuff from different dimension, like geography. Oh, I don't have geography available, so I'm going to use, for example, that currency. Uh, and uh, that, that could be it. I can cr uh, create a, a field parameter from these fields. And it will create. Oh. Slicer. With field parameter. Uh, which is a calculated table uh, with. Uh, several. Uh, aliases that field category will use using function name of. Uh, category from uh, table. Uh, Dim product and so on, those selected values. And then what I can do, I can use this parameter also in a table or matrix. And uh, right now this matrix, if I'll add 
uh, reseller value. I can uh, drill down in the order uh, that I uh, picked uh, when I built uh, this field parameter. So if I'm going to expand category, I will have option to navigate to color, which was the second level. From color, I can go to class. From class, I can go to currency code. But uh, this visual can be changed that if I pick in the slicer currency alternate key first, uh, then uh, holding control, I will pick color. Um, uh, setting up how it's going to be navigated this visual and I can watch it from uh, multiple multiple angles. So uh, right now I picked currency alternate key first, then color. I'm able to drill from currency to color. If I then want to add class, I can and I can put the category last by selecting it the last. So uh, this option of field parameters uh, is another option how to build your uh, report more more dynamic. And yeah, so uh, your end users will be able to slice and dice from uh, different angles and uh, watch how it's going to uh, drill down uh, the way that they will pick. All right. I was slightly quicker today, uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, these were the topics that I wanted to present to you. Uh, some of the uh, recommended courses that you can attend uh, to learn more are Power BI Desktop uh, with code PBID or Power BI Desktop uh, 2 with more advanced techniques. Uh, right now we are uh, going to do uh, with Copas uh, conference Power BI Day, uh, which is going to happen uh, on 27th April uh, in Microsoft Prague. And uh, it will have also a hybrid format where you, you will be able to attend online if you can't uh, attend in in person and uh, there's also a uh, code for uh, from IT uh, guys stand of business intelligence perspective uh, uh, if you want to use also not just power bi desktop but sql server analysis services and dive deeper into dax language uh, a course is called uh, the code is goc644 all right, uh, so if you don't have any uh, questions, thank you for your attention and uh, have a nice rest of the day.